suddenly changed pace to the centre. It's Burkamp. He's still around. He's That's there. magnificent. The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. <clears throat> Yeah, I completely forgot how to uh, get the tweet of that. I don't know where it's gone. Hello, it's the Sunday Roast <laughs> with with your host, Michael Feinberger, spelled wrong <laughs> just to make me hungry because I'm, I'm starving right now. And uh, and and your your magic one, Magic Mike, um, how is your evening going? I, I, I don't think there's a single person on Arsenal Twitter right now that doesn't know what you've been doing for the last hour. And, and I, as, as honest as I like to be, I think that might have been a little too much, Dan. Well, I tell you what, we are nothing if not giving. So they should thank us. And if anyone uh, wants to know, I'm A-OK now, but it's a, still a little bit of a tummy grumble because <laughs> life, life is never easy. Is it? How's your afternoon been? It's been good. Been good. Had a uh, had my first... Well, since I started this diet, had our first kind of event. We went to a. It wasn't a wedding, but it was a. It was a wedding reception and adoption of a child reception for clients of mine. Uh, these two gentlemen have been together for 24 years, but they recently, I think, officially tied the knot, um, and uh, and they have a an adopted baby that's coming in a few weeks. So it was a nice event downtown and. Uh, and I behaved for the most part with my diet, and um, and then this morning we went to see a friend's son be confirmed as an Eagle Scout, which something I'm completely not familiar with. The, you know, you go from Cub Scouts; they they don't have the Boy Scouts, and or do they? Of course they, they do. We invented it, you scumbag. I thought the Boy Scouts of America. I always thought, you, you know, behave maybe... yourself, young man. Well, Your, America was only invented in about 1972. I know. We've had, we, we, we've we've had Boy Scouts that. here for 2,000 years. Well, I guess he he was a Cub Scout, then he was a Boy Scout, and now he's become an Eagle Scout, which was which was a very big deal. So we went there to support him, and um, and and that's it. Now I'm home, and I was ready to podcast an hour ago, and you delayed it. Now I have nothing. Nothing are you say. are you poo shaming me? <laughs> <laughs> it's not I, that I, hard. I've seen I've seen your your uh, your your water closet. Yeah, uh, your, your the WC as and, it's known in the trade. And and I and I can understand why it would take you an hour. Actually, having seen oh. the, the contraptions that are required and, and uh, that toilet cost five grand. Five. The council played. I don't even use the <laughs> squirty bum water thing. I thought. Like, I bet you used. It. I bet you were drinking from it, weren't you? Well, if for five grand, you better be able to. Like, like when I when I go <laughs> into it, it should turn into like gold or or, or platinum or something like that, and, it, and that didn't happen. So, talking of gold or platinum, let's say hello to our beautiful listeners. We are, you got Matt Roberts, who's always there. Uh, Michael in Sweden, come on, it's tomorrow already. It's the Monday roast for Michael. Uh, there's you there. I'll ignore you. Loki's there. How do Loki? It's late for you. I still haven't checked your email. I, 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 emails are not a part of my life, Mike. I sent someone an email, yes, two days ago about my washing machine, about buying a new one. And, you know, I've not even checked to see if they've replied. Yeah, no, email, <sighs> emails are a huge part of my life for for work. I I, I, I hate, like I've said uh, on on previous shows, I hate talking on the phone, which is weird because I have no problem talking on here, but I hate talking on the phone. So I will always prefer emails. And in my profession, some people really like phone calls because they can talk about a lot really quickly and other people prefer emails and i i can't stand it when someone calls me and says hey i gotta tell you something call me back and they don't tell me what it's about i'm like can you email me and tell me what it's about because i gotta decide whether it really warrants a phone call or if you just don't want to take the time to type it out to me because I, I like to have a paper trail the papa trail uh it's only, it's only wise yes um you know Except for when I'm doing naughty things, in which case I don't want any kind of a paper trail. But, but, uh, but yeah, I, I I get about 200 emails a day, and I spend my entire day just catching up on emails, and I and I don't get to anything else I'm supposed to be doing. Terrible. Um, How was your weekend? Hold on, still saying hello to the people. Uh, Mark is there. He called you magic. He likes you. 
We got and a super then, uh, chat. Uh, I think that's what? the third super chat on the Sunday no, roast. Don't, don't ruin. Good God, J Rob has. I got it open on another screen. Um, J Rob is there. Sai, hello, Sai. Thank you again for your Twitch thingy. Sai, if you have a look at your Twitch, I've made you a VIP. You got a little purple diamond next to your name. That means you're special, Sai. Uh, Loki is saying hello to. Ah, oh, Steph. Steph's a, a, a late, a man of the late night shen shenanigans. Now, now, now I have a question about about this post from Steph. And, and no, Steph, I'm not going to mention how my son beat you in the FIFA tournament. That 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 it's enough Short already. Point. It's enough already. There's no point in mentioning that anymore. Um, is he saying you're a legacy fan, and then also saying hello to me, or is he saying that we're both legacy fans? Because you know, I, I, I'm a little hurt by not being called a legacy fan. In, in, in well, well. We'll have to see what the reply is. And I, for one, won't sleep until I find out. Um, who else? Is there? BX is there. And uh, Loki again. Thunder is there. Who We found out how old Thunder was the other day. Did we? He said in the chat how old he is. How old do you reckon? Thunder Road? Uh, well, is that a picture of him? No, that's from a film. Uh, I would go with 38. Oh, I said he's about 18. He said he's 42. See, I almost got it. I was the closest without going over, just like in The Price is Right. Um, the Thunder Putin bit doesn't I, take uh, me. Uh, and just for minutes. Thunder Road, because I'm, I'm going to pin this to him, I'm, I, even though it wasn't, I'm going to make him responsible for, for me finally uh, getting my uh, my act together from a dietary standpoint because of that awful but but loving comment that he made. What did he say? He said, he said in uh, he said you, you don't you want to live old enough to see your daughter's wedding <laughs> and and trust me he's not the first person to bring that to my attention uh, but uh, but it was right at the end of a podcast and I, and, I, and I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that back here because if I end up pulling this off and dropping the uh, the 10 stone that I'm looking to drop like I just uh, did I could yeah <laughs> well, you dropped it all in one hour. <laughs> Some would say dropped. I say sprayed. But moving on, I'm down 27 pounds in 25 days. That so, is uh, almost significant. I might actually checked? start to even be able to see it as my my chin collection goes from like eight down to maybe a, a, a an acceptable five or six. Have you checked to make sure you haven't accidentally lobbed off a limb? Have you, are you still four limbed? I thought you were going to ask if my scale, like like if I took one of the batteries out or something. <laughs> That's the next thing I'm 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 looking to do is I'm we'll take batteries out of things. I'm trying to decide. Well, I can open emails as long as I have my hands. So yeah, I could you know there are other podcasters who only have one leg. Um, uh, so it really wouldn't be that bad of an idea for me to join. Well, Thunder says uh that's not poo chain, why it takes 60 minutes? Well, it's not the pooing part, it's the getting ready, getting up in the air. Then doing it and then coming down again, getting back in the chair to, and then coming here. He has it's to a, light he has to light the fragrance candles first. That's it. I have to get the mood music in the, the candelabra. Whale, whale music. He has to <laughs> he has to wait until the part of the song that, that he likes the most <laughs> comes up. And I, and I always have to play Star Trek Four, the journey home. So with the capture of the whale. I have to play that as I'm as I'm doing my business. We lost five five people watching from saying that. Anyway, <laughs> Mr. Boblex is there. He's on the Twitch. Hey. Hello, Mr. Boblex. How Bobby, you doing, Tree Cool? Who I saw just four months ago uh in the flesh. And we had two pictures. We I, I put side by side pictures of the first time we met with uh with the lovely and and very much missed Dave Faber at uh at the Gunners pub at the Gunners pub uh in like 2017. And then the two of us together again five years later, uh, it was not pretty. Neither one of us have aged very well. At times, there's two pound donation from uh, J Rob. Thank you very much, J Rob. I will um, I will spend that on. I had to look uh, if those were pounds or euros. Uh, but, oh, two uh, euros. I was is in Ireland. I will spend that on a, jo a jaunty hat from the pound shop. So. Uh, be, be, because Stefan wants us to talk about Arsenal, we do have to. We, we let, let's do football, and then I'm seeing the questions already coming in. So yes, we uh, we want you to, to to ask questions that have very little, if anything, to do with Arsenal, and we will be happy more, to expound more than you would ever want to hear about those things. But um, I'll save that one. That will come yeah, up. That's Ajit. A good one. Ajit, you um. You still feeling good? I mean, the, the, it's like I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop on this thing, but results keep favoring us around us, and and uh, I mean, we're we're gonna finish what second this year? I mean, Liverpool's got to go on a bad stream now that they've got their cup. 
Um, Mane didn't look happy when he got subbed off today, did he? I heard. Yeah, I actually didn't get to watch the game. We were driving home from DC, uh, and I was listening to it. I actually completely missed the shootout, although that was fun. <laughs> that was like the most wonderful thing in the history of ever. Yeah, that that was uh, it was good. Twenty one consecutive scored penalties, got to be close to a record, and then uh, the but what, why, as as I mean, as, as run you... missed. I understand, like in the World Cup, all those years ago, subbing in Tim Cruel before the game is, you know, going to a shootout because of Newcastle. I mean, well, I mean, he was it was in the World Cup, so he was playing for uh, for the Dutch. But uh, I mean, I get that. But why would you take your great goalkeeper out and put in your shitty one, especially that I don't guy, especially the guy who refused to do the same thing in reverse a couple of years ago, didn't he? Uh, oh yeah, he wanted this. Um, whoever the Chelsea manager was, he wanted him to come off, and he refused to come off. Forgot about that. And then, and then, and then he did this today. I mean, yeah, we've got um, Mikel Arteta's silky smooth Vidal hair, Sassoon hair is there. Masked Gunner is there. Assuming that, guy is, assuming that guy isn't under ten years old, it's shocking, like premonition that this would be something to talk about for his parents to have named him that. Um, in advance when Mikel was probably, uh, you know, still uh, playing in the U10s. Hello, Don. Yes, it's true. Um, but for us, it is. I see so many people now that have obviously got the hump and don't want to talk about football because Arsenal were good and we're we're only getting better and we'll get better and better. We're le- it seems like we're learning from our mistakes game after game. And although there has been um, a, a, a muck up between Gabriel and uh, well gabriel on his own giving the goal away but we come back from that which is a magnificent result and then against brentford another error which uh, led to a stupid goal but these things were happening time and time again every single game before weren't they and now they're not it's yeah, a, I mean, quite you, a rare occurrence you, you could be you, you would just look at mustafi and you would just like it, it wasn't <laughs> when the mistake would be made it was in which half the mistake would be made or both like i think there, there were odds on that like you know first half second half or yes um, uh, but I just, I, I, I love it right now. And, and despite the temptation to like start going after negative people or going after the, you know, the, the standard people who are constantly complaining about things, I, I just, I'm trying not to, not to take the bait on that because like, you know, like Steph says. The moment the, the the latest thing oh and I'm on here I go taking the bait the latest thing <laughs> is the Obama Yang thing I don't know that many people I mean you could say you could you could rightly point out that Obama Yang was struggling at Arsenal even when he was playing before before all of this stuff happened you're right in that but I don't know anyone that said you know the guy is incapable of playing football anymore that his skills have completely fallen off a cliff it was that things had just gone sour here and he wasn't scoring here and he wasn't happy here and whatever the reason and whoever you blame for that, it shouldn't surprise anyone that he walks into a Barcelona team playing against La Liga opponents and, you know, and scores in bunches all of a sudden and whether that sustains or not, it means nothing about whether he should have stayed here or, or, you know, whether Arteta was wrong and freezing him out because it's just, it's completely irrelevant to me. Does it matter to you that he's scoring now? Does it make you happy, no. sad, angry? It makes me quite happy. I watched the game. I watched the first half. The uh, bit of a scramble. The ball came in from the left-hand side. Someone cleared it. His, his defender let go of him, so he took two steps back. Ball came in, and he, he whacked it, low-volleyed it into the into the net for 1-0. For they ended up winning 4-0. He's now got five goals in six games from The only reason I watched that game was to see him score goals, and he did it. Good luck to him. I said on a podcast ages ago that he'll go wherever he goes now, he'll score goals. And wherever he goes after that, he'll score goals. Because he at the age of 31, to still be able to do that backflip, the bloke is, is is massively talented and still fit and able to do all these kind of things. Yeah, and I mean, where he, it, it, he'll it, be there for 18 months and then go. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that he's ever had any issues with conditioning. with And, and every place he's gone, he performs well right off the start and then you know something ends up happening a couple of years in and and it's just it doesn't matter anymore because the fact is we are i mean with him this season 
since the beginning of this Premier League season in the Premier League game, I think he's played 14 games and the team scored 19 goals. He had four of them. The team overall, 19 and 14. That's something like 1.3, 1.4 per game. In the nine or 10 games that he hasn't played, we've got about 20 goals. It's around two per game. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it isn't like sometimes freeing up the, the scoring load from your presumed top scorer gets you more goals from the collective. And, and, and we've seen that with Saka stepping up, ESR stepping up, um, you know, we're just seeing more goals coming from, from creativity and, and from, sh- from different angles. And, and I think it's been a shackle that's been removed from us, but you know, whatever you think of Aubameyang and I, it, it does us no good for him to fail at Barcelona. And it does us no good for him <laughs> to succeed at Barcelona. It's just kind of irrelevant to me at this point. So very true. It is. It's uh, I don't care what he does. Um, he's, he's not doing it for us. He's gone. And like someone has just put in the chat there that he's uh, costing us £300,000 a week that we're no longer paying for someone to walk around with the hump. Doesn't even have to try that hard when you're playing in La Liga because there's only five decent teams. And one of those is every now and then. I mean, you look, Emery is at, at Villarreal and scoring five goals a game regularly. He's done it a few times this season. He'd never really have got five goals a game for Arsenal all that um, that regularly like he is no, now. You, you just you can't translate from one thing to the other. I, I, I hate when people try to do that. Oh, he did this here, so he could definitely do that there. How many times have we seen players come to the to the Premier League and, and not perform as well as they did in another league? I mean, it, it, it really just it's, – it's impossible to predict. I've almost got my finances – situation together i've been working on these spreadsheets analyzing them the most interesting thing that happened over the weekend as that is relative to that is uh is this whole chelsea thing with with abramovich and and first of all i we have friends uh, i don't know if you know this uh but you know john miami john who's now chicago john chicago windy john is he's now chicago known. windy john is uh <laughs> his lovely wife is ukrainian and has family in ukraine and oh i wondered why he changed his thing in fact not that they, anybody's not that anybody doesn't support them but i didn't know that yeah well i mean he he, he has a very um a very significant attachment to this there they actually got yes. got married in kiev oh. uh, and and i'm in a oh, kiev we have to call it kiev because i know i always thought it was kiev, kiev. and oh, the russians kiev. call it kiev i always thought the chicken could... was was you know do is a chicken kiev now but in all seriousness, it, I mean, not to get political, but it's just, it's its hard not to just be completely moved by that. I got, you know, I've got the news on 24-7, hoping uh, that, that things will, I mean, I'm, I'm shocked at how they're holding up to this point, actually. It's pretty impressive. It is. I, I was listening to, I listen to it all the time. There's radio stations in the UK that are just all talk. There's LBC. Radio 5 and uh, Talk Radio. There's the only three. I have them on all day round, usually LBC and then uh, Talk Radio later at night. And Ian Dale had someone on talking about the history, and I didn't realise that after World War I, uh, the Ukraine, 1918, Ukraine got independence or were their own country for years until they were absorbed by the um, the USSR. And, uh, yeah, they are their own country. It's crazy. It's, Look, uh, looking at a map of Europe and East Asia, like just over the last... 100 years, I guess, 105 years, that you know, or 110 years, things have changed so much. It's it, it's really kind of fascinating. Uh, Don, we are still paying. I, I believe the deal was that we would pay his wages through the end of this season and we would escape having to pay them for next season. So Barcelona got a pretty good deal short term uh, and we paid another player to leave, but under the premise that uh, we'd pay about twenty-five weeks of three hundred thousand a week or two fifty a week. I, I think it's two fifty a week when you don't have performance uh, enhancements on there that he obviously wasn't getting. Uh, so, yeah, it's about £6 million that we had to spend to get him to leave, to get out of having to spend about £18 million. But it also means we don't have someone wandering around with a face like a smacked ass the entire time, which is the important bit, which is maybe as important as saving all that money. Yeah. Because that's £6 million more we can spend in the summer on, on wages and stuff. Absolutely true. So, so what's your take on on uh, on Abramovich and and this whole move? I mean, I I've come to the conclusion that it's really kind of a meaningless thing meant to try to protect the club, but it doesn't. It, well, they 
the the charity thing, charity foundation have said no, we don't want to be in charge of it, haven't they? That's the last Did I they? heard. Yeah, he said I'm going to give it over to the the foundation, and then it was on the news this afternoon. I've not heard an update saying the foundation said no, we don't want it, or we can't take it yet, or or something along those lines. Because I think it's just him hiding all of his wealth under a bed somewhere that will come back and take later. I didn't. I hadn't heard that news yet, but it uh, it, it it's. What I've the, the thing that I've come to the conclusion of, and this is no secret, but in in doing these spreadsheets, I'm I'm essentially comparing how these clubs go about their business, and it's it's really fascinating. I mean, Ar Arsenal is run to no one's surprise, along with Liverpool, uh, most like an actual business. Um, Spurs also kind of like a business, but a business that sucks and has no trophies and 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 a, and a ton of stadium debt. The other three clubs are all fascinating the, the, when it comes to the top six. Chelsea are a money laundering operation. <laughs> I mean, there's no two ways to say it. Uh, whether or not the times they've bought club players for a massive amount of money from um, Eastern European team, Russian or Ukrainian teams. Well, there, there's um, very others. there's very sketchy relationships. I know Vitesse they 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 moved players in and out from Vitesse. There's well, look how much uh, money they paid for, and they also have budget deals going on with Atletico Madrid. The, the amount of money they paid for Diego Costa back and forth, and Douglas Lu and David Luiz back and forth, and then ended up letting them go there on a on a free. And uh, who was the uh, Fernando Torres? The amount of money they let they bought him and then let him go for free. By the way, keep keep the questions coming. There's and some Shevchenko. great questions that are in the chat that we're going to move to in a second. They but. paid a fortune for Chev, what thirty odd million a decade ago for Shevchenko, who was at the end of his career, and then let him go back on a free. Some dodgy stuff going on there. Well, allegedly. but the, the the issue is that they don't. I mean, they they don't have a profit. They haven't had a profit. Even I mean, their their net spend has not been that much. But the issue is they they don't. I don't think they own Stamford Bridge. First of all. Um, I don't, they don't have the revenues from, from anything other than their performance. So the years that their revenues are good are the, are like last year where the only reason they didn't have an enormous, enormous loss is because they won the champions league. And that comes with about 120 million pounds just for, just for winning the champions league, not for just winning the final, but for getting to the final and winning. And, um, you know, but they owe, Roman Abramovich about 1.6 billion pounds over two, there you go over two million dollars and you know it, it's a loan that is made through a system of companies so that the club actually don't have any debt Chelsea Football Club don't have any debt but Fordham which owns Chelsea has debt to one of his companies which is controlled by him and no one knows the source of the money that's gone in, that the the source of money for these loans. But once he's paid back, that money becomes washed, and and you know the the source of the money has to do with the whole. The, there's a trade for shares program that started in the USSR, where a bunch of oligarchs basically got to buy public assets for for pennies on the dollar. It's so corrupt, I can't even imagine how it could be unwound at this point without Chelsea just having to fold. But I'm not. I'm not suggesting that that's going to happen. Uh, but they're they've gotten a lot of short term glory, and I don't know that I, I posted. I tweeted something about this. I don't know how much I could just turn the other cheek and turn the other way when this whole thing unravels with Chelsea, uh, and say, yeah, but we won, you know, two or three Champions Leagues, and got, I mean, a certain type of football fan certainly will be fine with that, and then they'll go and support another club when when Chelsea goes away. But uh, but it's it's just really really dirty. It, it's really dirty. And and um, but if you think that the Cronkies are bad managers, sorry, but uh, bad ownership, just be glad you're not a Manchester United supporter. Because as much as they've gotten to have nice things and to, and and had success over the years, the Glazers are the worst owners. I mean. I'll, I'll go into it in a little bit more detail. We're going to try to do a show, and I'll, I'll I'll do it on the Gooners podcast. We'll take a traveling road. We'll do it on yours if you want. And we'll try to. I know Sophie wants to have a, a version of it, both both before and after the Arsenal finances come out, because we're about to lose a hundred million pounds in the last uh, 
in the in the the 2021 uh, season as well. But I'm fascinated by this stuff. I'd be more fascinated by winning the the, the Premier League and the Champions League. But this stuff does interest me. Talking of um, just uh, what Loki said in the chat, I went and had a look. Oleg Luzhny, legendary um, Arsenal player, won the league right back, ended up finishing his career going to Wolves. It says here in the Daily Mirror from 11.03 tonight, former Arsenal and oh, and former Arsenal star Oleg Luzhny has vowed to put his coaching aspirations on hold to stay and fight in Ukraine. Russia have besieged Luzhny's home nation over the last few days following the, the invasion of the country. A number of high-profile Ukrainian sports stars, including Vitaly and Vladimir K Klitschko, have vowed to take up arms. Wow. You mean all the Premier League players shit their pants when they played against Luzhny. It'll take on the entire Russia army and, and it'll He'll two foot the lot of them and, and kill them. The man's a beast. You ever seen? Remember seeing him play? Uh, he no, was he, that was during, during my pause era, where I was uh, where I was unable to follow Arsenal. That was uh, his his career. So uh, let's see what years were the he he, he was with Arsenal ninety nine to two thousand three. Yeah, that, that's right smack dab in the middle of my my uh, what, what do we say that I I, I would say I, I went. Uh, yeah, sabbatical from Arsenal. <laughs> Involuntary sabbatical from Arsenal. Anyway, um, what have you been up to this week? Anything interesting other than other than your uh, going to see... Uh, what did you say they did? They went to become a Boy Scout? Uh, yeah, it was a neighbor's son, uh, 18, just became an Eagle Scout, which is like the highest if level one of, of if, Boy If Scout Sean right? had a child and said, do you want to come and watch this kid go... I'd say, Sean, get fucked. <laughs> I'm not coming to. There's only one thing that if I ever knew anybody who was doing a, a, a gender reveal for a baby, I'd probably hit them. So yeah, you do I've, never, been, you I've never been to one of those before. No, there's too many things when you're when you're a married couple that you have to go. Oh, I'm going to. I was, I I was to about those. to say something that that had I actually followed through with it, I then realized it could have been taken in a way that would get both of us canceled for the rest of our lives. <laughs> um, I'm not going to. I'm going to Frank and Sharon. They're having their um their their little one. Um, uh, I can't remember his name. Alfie is it? I don't know. Can't remember. Uh, they're going to have him christened soon, so I'm going to go to that. But as a general rule, the only time I ever go to church is when I'm taking Americans there to have murdered, as we, as you well know. Yeah, you walked me through that uh, the graveyard of death to to show me where my fate would be if I ever came back to to visit again. It was indeed. I've had a I've had a, a tough week with my washing machine has stopped working. It's a shitty hot point washer dryer. I don't have enough room for it. And it's in the hallway cupboard. That's why you never saw it. But it's, it washes. It just doesn't dry. And I have so, never uh, I've never had luck with the washer dryers at any of my Airbnbs or any place I've ever stayed in. in too complicated. Place. It's supposed to do the wash and then dry, right? I mean, they, it, yeah. it my stuff just comes out sopping wet. Well, how long do you need as to go in for? sopping wet as well? If you know what I'm saying. Uh, so I bought a new one. I'm, I'm worried that it's the one. I, oh, I'm not bought it. I've arranged to get it. It's going to cost me about 450 quid. It's a high sense, but it's got a 15 minute wash. It says for lightly soiled, and I only ever lightly soil myself, so I'm thinking it's probably going to be okay. <laughs> lightly soiled. Yeah. So hopefully, and it's uh, if I emailed them and said uh, this is the one I want, my local shop. I said, and I said in the email, I don't want to gear. I did it from my phone, so I don't even know if they've got it. Um, I said, I'm going to go. I don't want to give those tax dodging scumbags any of my money. So, this is the one I want. And I know you're not going to match their price, but what can you do? So, hopefully, look, get back to me. Big Bob's going to come round. You know, window tint that you put on cars? Yeah. I've got that all over my bedroom window. So, you're looking in, you can't see anything. But when I look out, it's all tinted. So, I've got some more for the front door and the back door. So, Bob, Big Bob's going to come round and do that. You should, got the, you, you should put the one-way mirror in there, like they have in the in the police station when the in the interrogation room, so that uh, I don't want mirrored. But you should do it the opposite way, so that everyone can see in, but but you just see yourself when you're looking out. You are, you <laughs> so sir. Just everybody, including you, is seeing your naked body. Quite frankly, you're a deviant. Oh, here you go. Look at this, and he put these in. There's my bedroom behind me. You've been in there. Echo, <laughs> bedroom lights on. I actually didn't go in there. I just looked in there. Purple. I didn't. I didn't want it to be able to be said that I've been in your bedroom. Well, that that's the, the scariest thing about that. Bedroom is, lights red is your eye. <gasps> Look at that. So, 
we've got some good comments. Uh, the one from Dempsey was great that he he performed the gender reveal in the park and he's not allowed back. <laughs> Well, yeah, they've, uh... that's, that's kind of the cousin of what I was going to say, but what I was going to say was was much worse. But uh, but yeah, that's yeah, dear, dear. that's not good. Yeah, so I've got a list of things for Big Bob to do. I've got an N6 note, uh, get a Nintendo GameCube I want to get rid of, and I've got a PlayStation 3 Slim or no, PlayStation 2 Slim that I've finished with. So I'm going to get I'm going to box those up and more shit I'm going to get rid of. And then I've got uh, an entire loft full of stuff that I'll be tweeting got about 300 corinthian figures some of them boxed oh, imagine that the big book's going to come over in the week and he's having sean's bed as well he's going to wring it dry and then he's gonna, she's got to create a king-size bed she said she doesn't want it she'll have the mattress for her place so he's going to come and get it and then take it away he only lives in goddy as well and then put the the mattress in the van and then it'll take the van and mum will take the mattress up to her get it out of the way so bob's got i haven't told him any of this yet so he's going to be doing all the windows I only pay him a tenner an hour, and he should be happy. Is Bob your uh, uncle? Bob's your uncle? No, Big Bob. Big, Big, Big Bob's only about thirty-four. He's, he can lift me up, and he might assume he might. I'm a bit, I'm a bit on the chubby side. Yeah, you know, I, I, I am aware of the shape of your, of your body. When something goes wrong and I end up on the floor, Bob's the one we ring to come and get me. Well, it's nice to have a Bob then. This I want to answer. Uh, Demsex on fire today. We would have a bide. A bidet, I think he's talking about. Uh, I have no idea. Forgot, how you spell he forgot that. the silent T at the end, but oh, I would have got it then. I love bidets. I mean, and and it's very rare here. Like, I mean, I know some people that have one, but uh, but you know, not they're not accessible to me. But I I I don't go anywhere when I'm in a hotel room that has a bidet. <laughs> Basically, I just I just stay there all day. It's the greatest thing ever, and I don't know why it's considered kind of like. I don't know. They're, they're just not, they're not used nearly. Well, not used, but they don't, they're not in as many. I, I stayed in this one crappy hotel room in Milan when I went to see Arsenal in Milan no. a couple years ago. Uh, it was not a nice hotel. It was a cheap hotel and they had a bidet that looked like if I sat on it, I would, uh, I would get all of the Rias and, um, and, and what, what are some other, uh, gonorrhea syphilis i would have gotten the iphiluses and the urea and the areas so i didn't sit on that one but um but yeah i'm i'm yeah, a what, big fan you my one uh well i'm so fat that they don't have the little thing comes out and goes and then squirts water but i'm so fat the water goes up my back they <laughs> <laughs> spent five grand on the toilet it doesn't go anywhere near me so that's one of the reasons why i'm, uh, I'm on a diet and no, i don't know how much i weigh sean listen to the last one of these she said she liked it hello bubba if you're listening you're my favorite child oh there are there are toilets uh, I, I know howard stern used to talk about them all the time he's got like they're i forget what they're called there's a brand of it and in fact my neighbor who is a uh a contractor he you know he paints and builds and stuff for a living and and he's got one of these things i forget what they're called but it's essentially like it, it's like the, a car wash for human beings for your anus. You know, it it it, it waxes, it blows, it dries, it cleans, it, you know, the whole thing. So uh, I have a cleaner as well. PE twenty nine didn't turn up this week. Stacy, she fifteen quid an hour. Fucking hell, she forgot to get diesel, and then everyone went, "Oh, we need diesel because it's eight hundred pound a litre now." So she couldn't find any. She didn't come round. So uh, okay, let's get to some of these uh, these uh, user questions. As, as you didn't say that to Sean if she's going to listen. Excuse me. I said Sean listened to the last show and liked it. Oh, well, it's because everyone in your family except for you loved me. <laughs> so no, you took mom, the green shit off daughter, my pizza for me. Sean's mom. <laughs> yeah, you took all the green shit off my pizza for me. I mean that's that's the way to get into to the heart of your daughter. She just needs to, to she needs to stop you know learn how to drive. That's all. Yeah, she, yeah, she got done again. She's uh she's had two accidents, three accidents in that uh, two. So your One daughter got done again. Her. Huh? Your daughter got done again. Yeah, she had a caravan hit her when she was queuing to get on a ferry. The car wasn't even running. And the bloke swung around and scraped the whole side of her car. Then a bus drove her off the road, and then she fucked up two alloys because the bus decided it had the right way when it didn't. And then uh, she got a done for a six point and she just got the fine for 380 quid. 
And then she got a speed awareness course that cost her 95 quid. That's just in the space of a month. These have finally so, come through a year later. Get them now super she's... chats. <laughs> <laughs> no, she chats, pays for herself. I'm not helping her pay for any of that lot. And then she's she had to take 1200 quid out of her ISA to pay for it all. And then she's had to, now she got caught, went to London and, she, and the bloke in front of her stopped to let someone out in the middle of flowing traffic. So she was stopped in the crisscross yellow box and now she's got a 60 quid fine. There you go. Don't go to London. It's a shithole. Um, he says so, to the man who is excited AF to go in in less than five weeks. Um, a month away from, uh, you know, that I might be in London three times between now and the end of the year. Sorry. Having just been there a couple, I mean, this is this is good good times and and travel to London. But I'm going in April with 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 Jake with my with my boy. Are you going to see some games? I am going to see some games. We're going to Palace away and Brighton home and a ton of other games, including possibly outside of the country uh, while we're over. So Are you meeting just... people? For those? I, t- I had to break the news to Sean that you're coming down in April and you won't be seen us unless we go to a match and then you'll be drunk. Or will you behave uh, yourself, not getting drunk when you have the boy with you? Um, well, you know, he, he's of age, <laughs> but, he, but he has no interest. So, I, you know, I... I I will probably take a little bit of a break on my on my dry 2022 uh, whilst in London on game day. But so, what uh, date are you coming down? Uh, we'll be arriving either depending on what we I, I, probably either the third or the fourth. The the games on the fourth, the uh, the Palace game. It's on the Monday now. Fourth so, of uh, no, no, the Brighton one's on the 9th of April. Yep. And Palace on the fourth. Will you be here for Southampton? No. No, no, I'll be here for just the two games unless they get well. They're not going to schedule one during the week now. I was hoping they would reschedule one of those games in hand for that midweek, but now that they've moved no. the Palace game to the Monday night, there's almost no chance they're going to do that. So, no chance, no chance at all. So, it's two I games. Will, will, game we, will we try to infiltrate the Spurs stadium again? Um, I don't think so. I, th- I think I got, I think I made my point, uh, once already. So, Sai wants to know if he had a, we had a 30 minute discussion on toilet stuff. We certainly did. Um, I want to get rid of my toilet because it's big and bulky and just get a normal one in there. Um, hmm. Are you if, you're in around, if you're in and around London, though, the day of the day of the Brighton game, Tollington, I want to see you. Can met I get lot, in the Tollington? Met a lot of cool people, a lot of good uh, podcast viewers and people the last time I was there who, who came out to the Tolly. It's just uh, it's a fun, fun time uh, on a game day, and and I think that game is going to be a proper three p.m. kickoff. So, uh, so there'll be time both before and after to revel. And when and are you coming can, back after that? Um, I might come over the summer because my daughter is uh, is waiting for her acceptance to a summer journalism program abroad and of course talk sport of course she could not not talk sport she's political uh if she were a sports journalist uh in training i could introduce her to a number of people that would be very good to talk to but unfortunately i mean fortunately for her uh it's more political and i don't have as many friends in the political journalism set as i do in the arsenal and sports journalism areas but uh but so she'll be in london and i would imagine we'll come to visit her for a short period of time and then i'm back again with my wife in my wife august <laughs> for the wedding of the century uh, mr canton mr canton's wedding and then we're gonna try to maybe add another week or 10 days onto it and and, and maybe get to some cities in europe that i haven't been to yet because um there are I'll some places question i always seem to go to the same places every time i go to europe i mean it's it's and it's weird. I haven't been to Scotland, haven't been to Ireland, but oh, and uh, yeah, Ireland. twelve pins often after the game. Uh, Tolly before, twelve pins after most of the time. They won't understand a word you're saying. The, the Tolling, which of these pubs can I get into? Have they got flat access? Do I not need to get people to lay down for me to drive over them? There are you steps know, on the front uh, of the Tollington, but I believe on the side you might be able to get in. I can ask Martin. Well, when that. you're there. Oh, 
to make a video of uh, of you entering from all the i know you're a fan of many exits and entrances you make you make a video I and mean, you usually make those videos anyway so just make a video of every pub you go in the, the, the whether they're they're friendly or not just looking at the floor and the door width of the doors and 12 pins they got you'll have no problem with that much i know the what the 12 pins that's all street level so uh so I know I know you'll be fine there, but yeah, if you can come down that weekend, I would I would uh, mm. that would be lovely for the Brighton game. I'll see if I you know. Don's been cheeky. Tom's getting married. Who's the lucky guy? Who's the lucky guy? Tom yeah, Tom's is, the, Tom lucky is guy. the lucky guy. Yes, he because she's far too good for him. Is it Charlotte? Yes. Yes. No, it's no, no it's not Charlotte. It's Georgia. It's Georgia. I know it's some part in America. <laughs> no, it's a I place in America where people live. I uh, I, oh, I I have it somewhere, but I can't. It, it won't, I won't be able to bring it up in time for you to upload it. Although maybe I maybe we'll try. Uh, but I have a video when I was driving down to Orlando this summer for the Arsenal tour that never was. Um, I when I went from South Carolina into Georgia, I I kind of put my phone up on my dashboard. I was a naughty boy. I was driving, but I wasn't like distracted or anything. And I just filmed the moment that I entered Georgia. And then sent it to Tom, <laughs> and he's like, "Georgia thought that was pretty funny." I'm like, "You weren't supposed to play it for her." <laughs> but I was like, "I have anyway. entered Georgia. I am currently entering Georgia, Tom. Um, I'm entering Georgia." And, just uh, to finish off a previous topic, there's my washing machine. It's uh, that's hot. The silence says it all. <laughs> I just. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I've never had luck with, I mean, you know, when I stay at an Airbnb, I, I assume I'm going to get a wash done and I do, but I end up having to hang everything to dry. On... That's because they take a long time to dry because they got a condenser in it. Um, Tolly will be packed. Not with me. Demps, I shall say, get the fuck out of the way. And I'll have, expect people to put petals on the floor when I turn up. I don't usually go to pubs. We can, we can lift you up and bring you in like a, like a funeral, uh, procession yeah. except you you won't you know it won't be a funeral um but yeah oh i uh yeah i'm looking forward to it but when we get closer we'll we'll we'll, we'll give specifics because unlike other people who are not men of the people we don't you know we, we want to publicize where we are because we're lonely and and we want people to be like oh yeah you're the you're the fat guy on the on the youtube Kind of Talking funny. of that, let's go and have a look at some of the um again. J Rob give us two euros. Cheers, J Rob. That starred save. Um Ajit says favorite WWE WWF early yeah. 2000 stars. I mean, I can go back to the 80s. So I'll let you start. Early Where's your banner? Have you got your, that... have you got any... go on, carry on. I, I was gonna I'll say go that... find, I'll go find your banners while you talk. Like like with uh with uh arsenal i kind of i followed it as a kid and then didn't and then strangely and and i, I don't know if i've mentioned this before but strangely the owen hart thing like woke me back up to the i mean it's a terrible reason to start watching because the it's only that should have Hart. been avoided i was but watching it, that live but it was like oh wait i haven't looked at this for a while and i wanted to see how they handled it and then i started to get sucked in by it again so from like may of 1999 to maybe 2007 2008 i watched and then and then i grew up again and then when my son got to be old enough he and his friends started watching and so then i started watching again and i haven't stopped and it's one of my great shames of my life so early 2000s era i mean other than the rock and stone cold who are and and kurt angle uh, kurt angle I've never seen somebody hit the ground running as quickly as Kurt Angle did. I don't like him. I mean, him as a person versus, or him as a character. He, he. Well, uh, I don't like either. I don't like the fact that he's so red. Is that racist? I don't know. Was he? He's red. Like, like his face yeah. gets red because he he's, gets very, very red. I don't like it. I don't trust it. I don't like it, and I don't want to see it anymore. And then him being a drug addict, I wasn't overly keen about. And uh, I saw him on one of those ones, Stone, the the ranch with Stone Cold, where they just talk about his career. Uh, he seems to be a bit of a whiner. He fucked his career up, and then he's having a bit of a whiner. I've got all your your latest four pictures whenever you're ready, sir. Well, Chris and Chris knows who my favorite of all time. I mean, the 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 goat, as far as I'm concerned, and he's still going in his fifties, um, and uh, 
and he's just and he's just mentioned it. Chris Jericho, who came into the WWE in the late in late '99 after being in WCW, he he came in and that guy's had, in my opinion, the best career of just switching back and forth between That's characters what I saw. and. On the, the Broken Skull Ranch thing with him, where I didn't realize how many times he reinvented himself. Oh, he reinvented him himself. HBK. And, 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 and the catchphrases are hilarious. He, he basically, you can, you can break down his career in about 18 different pieces, each one of them alternatively like funny, good guy, diabolical bad guy, long haired rocker, short hair guy, buddy comedy guy. I mean, he's done a bunch of buddy comedy type of programs for for. I mean, and that's honestly that's why I find it entertaining. Not so I if mean, you had to leave, as talented as they are as performers and stuff, I generally don't get sucked in as much by the actual matches as I do about the whole soap opera element of it. And comedy is is what is what gets me. I don't I don't need I don't care if about the bad. So you like the old the whole um wearing the little hat thing. Where was it? Was it him and The Rock where they had that whole thing where he'd wear that little hat? Or was it him and um no, it was him and Stone Cold, wasn't it? Oh no, it was Kurt Angle and Stone Cold with the hat. And the band. Yeah, the oh, that that stuff is the best when it's bad guys just being stupid and funny, as I, that was the greatest Stone Cold of all time was when when he was he was with Vince McMahon's team as as a bad guy except he started all these things like his what chant every time someone would say something even to this day they do it come out of nowhere and they just become massive crowd i mean it's it's the whole thing is so stupid and i and i understand that but it's just the the list with chris jericho is the best uh i even even remember when we were coming up in the podcast world i used to i used to post stuff about about the list to chris just to get my name on the podcast (laughs) But uh, it was so funny. It, it it's it's just it, when it's not funny, it's not it's not good. But, so but if Kevin, to Kevin, five, Owens, Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho did about a year of hilarious buddy comedy, even though they were supposed to be bad guys. Uh, Jericho just he does promos or speeches or like we'll talk about somebody, and there's no way he even. There's no way it's prepared. He just it just comes right off of his, right off of the top of his head, and it's brilliant. And uh, and there are a couple of new ones over in AEW, which was when, uh, when uh, which is where I was when I held up the signs most recently. I mean, I should be I should get, I should get paid for this. That, you I, first, I, I mean, specifically oh, bought seats that I knew would be right front and center on the camera, and. Uh, just, oh, they don't I, check the signs. They did check the signs, and they didn't have a problem with them. One time, I had an actual Gooners podcast sign on, on, and and that got confiscated at a WWE event. But this was a they didn't do anything. No one came over to me and was like, "Please stop doing that." It was, it was, uh, oh, it was that was a fun night. My friend Ryan and I, uh, Ryan holding up the everywhere we go, <laughs> and myself. And 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 the and the greatest part is that Twitter just goes absolutely nuts. They're like, "Who are these Arsenal?" You know, and it's half positive, half negative. Like, get these Arsenal guys out of the out of the state, out of the place. And and uh, uh, it's fun to be but, stupid, you know. As long as you're not actually stupid, it's fun to be it, to, to to try to be stupid. So stop talking. What is your favorite? If you had to list your five favorite wrestlers. For in ring personality gimmick, the what they did for wrestling, the entire thing. Because I'd have Stone Cold, I'd have The Undertaker, Hulk Hogan, uh, Bret Hart, and oh, the other one's hard. I mean, I really like Mick Foley for all of Mick Foley, Cactus Jack, Mankind, all yeah. the stuff that he did. But I didn't like the hardcore stuff that he did. I thought that was a uh, that, that's when when they incorporated ECW into WWF. That's when things got a little bit too rough, and you see it now. Kids who were five or six around the year two thousand, the Attitude Era, and you see what they did. You'd have five people kicking and punching one person on the floor. That changed the way that young men get drunk and fight now. Because back in my day, when young men would fight, it would be with fists, and everyone stood up. Now you see people beating people. It'd be five or six people kicking and stamping and punching. And I swear that directly has an influence from WWF 
on what they used to do in ring. And now kids of grown men are doing it and killing people by stamping on them. And that is that that to, when that whole attitude era and the, the ECW stuff went way too far. So go on, name your your five favorite. I mean, at the top of the list is is Chris Jericho by far. Um, Stone Cold. The Rock was kind of too. Oh, that's I, my other one. The Rock. I I mean, there's no question that he was good for wrestling, but I I don't know. I just he was almost a little too comic book for me. Um, yeah, but that's what the whole of the whole Hogan era was. It was all comic book, and that fight that they had between them, I think it might be one of the last ones that the Hulk Hogan did, and and the Rock beat him, and they they shook hands, and then that was that was really a yeah, that was a good moment a for, moving for moment. people who t- like to tie the areas together. But also Jericho, Stone Cold, HBK. Um, I'm glad Foley. you didn't say Triple H because I hate him. No, Mick Foley, and then the fifth one. You may not even know who he is, but he is like Chris Jericho and CM Punk and and The Rock, kind of all wrapped into a twenty three year old package, who for that is probably going to carry the industry for the next twenty years. And he's Jewish. Uh, of I Maxwell Jacob Friedman MJF uh, is he's got the charisma and and the the personality and and you know he's a acceptable wrestler who's he wrestle with he's with aew he was just in a big uh in a big program with uh with uh cm punk actually but uh but yeah the he's he's my like from from the current generation he's but there's so many good ones over in aew they're actually really really good wrestlers but um other than our preview for wrestlemania that we're gonna do sometime in the next month or so before i leave for england who's doing that this is uh, i don't know we'll do it Okay. We'll, we'll invite some people on. We can uh, Chris can be a part of it because you know it's his podcast as well. Uh, I know a few other people that would be good. We could try to get Charles Watts on because he's a closet. Well, not really. Yeah, a closet. he's a I wrestler. On your show, you mentioned it a few times, didn't you? When you had him on, he loves it. He he went to an ECW show when they came over in England and brought his like Nintendo, hoping that he could give it to Sabu to hit somebody over the head with. <laughs> So, uh, did you know with all Charles Watts videos, skip the first minute? And if you count how many times he obviously knows, ten minutes is the mark you've got to get past for adverts. How many times he repeats himself? He only has four minutes worth of content, and oh. it's a skill. He stretches that out to fifteen minutes. I always skip the first minute because he tells you what he's going to talk about, and then he repeats it. But I do like him; he's brilliant, and he's the only one journalist I listen to. Yeah, no, but, well, he he's uh, he, he doesn't have. An ego at all. He's a lovely guy. Uh, he came out to meet me at the. Uh, and you're horrible to him. You keep playing the bit where the thing fell down in the background. Well, no. <laughs> you bully. Good. You're bullying a, a nationally renowned journalist. I'm not bully- if I'm bullying him, then then uh, then you won't ever see him on the podcast again because he won't <laughs> come on. But um, what you're teasing him? Well, I I you know I tease because I love. Uh, so what other questions do we have? Oh, you, you bowled me a googly there. I just read. Oh, you've got a new. Oh, you've got a new telly in your office with the white carpet. Why have you got white carpet? Who are you talking about? Yeah, twenty third of January. You tweeted a picture of a a black unit of a big telly above it. Is that new? No, I. Um, what's underneath it? Is it a safe? Does it look like a safe? I don't know. I've changed the picture now. Underneath it. It's a, a black unit, silver um, drawer handles, and there's one thing on top of it. It looks like a an Amazon box. Yeah, it's 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 a uh, I, well when I when I redid my desk with this new contraption that that I have my two computer monitors on, I couldn't see my television anymore, so I had to prop it up on top of a safe and on top of a shoebox. No, the telly's hanging on the wall. No, not in this room. Looks like it. No, in the, a... the photo I was looking. At. I was just looking. I found another photo. Oh Did yeah, you that... know this first man. That guy was well. Yeah, this was there were it was two nights. It was a Wednesday and a Friday night. The, the Friday night we look up and there's this guy in a in a Harry Kane jersey, uh, like in the second row. So he was on television all night. And afterwards, I walked up to him. you. Never know until you ask him. I walked up to him to see if he would hold the sign. I I would have never done that, but he didn't mind getting battered everywhere he got went. So uh, so yeah. So I got this done. With my beak, with my mask that looks like a beak. I refuse to wear them. 
I don't believe the hype. Uh, right, so I'm just getting, I'll just download some more of your pictures. So it's, uh, oh, there's that one. And then well, there's... Let's a question, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to send you the uh, the, the video from, from when I entered Georgia, because it was pretty funny. Um, here you go, there's another picture. Who's it? Oh, you've already had that one. That's Cody Rose, who, who helped to found the company, and now, apparently, he's left... Uh, the company and might even be going down back to uh, back to WWE again, which would be I was surprised crazy. by how much his brother hated or his dad hated the gold dust thing, which was very sexual but very funny. And there was very well, few entrances like that. Where it all black. His brother yeah? was the one that had the gold dust. I wasn't sure if it was his dad or his brother. I know Dustin Rhodes was uh, their dad, wasn't it? Their dad was was Dusty Rhodes, yeah, legend. I didn't like him either. The big lumps on his head. This is the video pitch I'm on about. What's going on there apart from a bloated feet? Oh, that's my. That's not in my office. That's downstairs. Uh, so that's my. That's my living why, room. Why did you tweet it? Just watching the game. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think you tweeted so. it to Amanda. I don't think I did. Did I? Oh, she. Her at was above it. Oh, I don't know. No, fair enough. That's my living um, room. That's my go. other living room with tons of seating. I have stadium seating in my living room. You still haven't learned how to shave your head properly, but we'll move on from that. It is a dying art. Do you say you've sent me the video where you're? No, I was. I'm trying to find yeah. it, but it's hard to do while we're on the air. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, oh god, there's been loads of messages. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Nick, if you want to buy it off me, let me know. It's got one black controller. Um. Don one and clackers that should just be randomly exploded. I don't know. Uh, Mike's going to mention March Madness in a minute. I don't know what that is. It's the NCAA basketball tournament that is one of the best sporting events in the world, except uh, my beloved 2018 champion, uh, or 2019 was it? I think it was 2018. Uh, Virginia Cavaliers are not going to be in the tournament this year, so I won't be watching. Okay. Okay, right. Let's move on to another question. So we've done that one from Ajit. Uh, Thunder has one. Mike, your daily emails, more internal or external? Do you use Teams? I have found it is a better way to communicate. The most... best way I communicate is in the ABW WhatsApp group. It's constantly moaning. Will you fucks reply to my fucking message without swearing? And they still ignore me. Um. Uh... Yeah, they're most they're mostly external. Uh, we do use Teams. It's brand new. It doesn't work on my system uh, the way it's supposed to, so I kind of hate it at the moment. Uh, we had a, an internal messaging system beforehand, anyway, that was called Open Gentleman. the door, shouting. Um, yeah, well, no one cares what I have to say anyway. Um, in work, so no, it, it's mostly external. I thought you were the bus man. I like typing though. I I, I would rather type than talk when it comes to like transactional stuff if we're just bullshitting or talking about arsenal that's a different story but uh but yeah my emails are, are mostly external oh huh. abw has an email if anybody wants to well, what is there it? a picture of you and fk did you go on fk's podcast no he came on ours what are you searching for? Well, like, what are you I'm searching? searching for your timeline trying to find pictures and most of it is porn or really bad photoshops yeah, and pictures definitely. of Tom in bed. <laughs> <laughs> right, we get rid of that one. That one's done. Right. Um, the next one is from Mark Backridden. Whilst on the subject of pooing, is it correct grammar to have a dump or take a dump? Well, I think take isn't one. I uh, I've I I have taken. Or, That's what they I say have. here though. And 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 my mother of all people used to joke about like why why do people say I'm going to take a shit or take a dump. Like, like, you're giving it. Well, it's the same thing as you stupid Americans where you go into McDonald's and go, can I get a... And I'd go, wait one moment, sir. You can come behind the counter, and yes, you can get it. It's not. It is can I have. Oh. May I have? Can I have? Yeah, it's, not even, can I, it's not even can I have because... Annoying my, me. My mother would be like, you can, but may you? No, you may not. In this country, when we go in order, and Sean says, "Can I get?" I said, "No, Sean, no." 
it's can I have? Or someone goes, oh, I'll grab a McDonald's. Well, you're not going to grab it, are you? No, you're not. Well, you're certainly not going to grab the entire restaurant. I like how people in England, they say uh, something like, like, you know, oh, you're going to go have a Chinese. Yeah. I'll say like that. we would never say, you'd never say that here. You, you, I'm gonna get some Chinese food. That's good. Having, a Chinese, Chinese. having a Chinese sounds like a preference, like in your personal life. And, I've noticed. I watch a lot of um, Twitch, and I watch a lot of people, and all the people of the same race stick together. Now, I only, there's one called Cook Sucks. He's an American Korean, and there's Keemstar. No, Keem, Keemstar, not Keemstar, Keemstar. He's American Korean. And when they go around, they only stream with other American Koreans. And I've only just noticed this. There's a whole group of them. And I'm thinking, why don't they? That's just your Americans. I was talking to Al Hernandez about this, the way you Americans. You're very strange. No one ever re- refers to themselves as American. But he supports Mexico. I said, why don't you support America? I said, you're born in America. He said, yeah. I said, you're American. He said, no, I'm Mexican. I said, but you're born in America. I said, there you go. That's the problem with your country. You're born there. Stop stop celebrating Paddy's Day because none of you are fucking Irish. Well, there's plenty of Irish people that live over no, here. No, could be born in Ireland. Well, Hardly any. Plenty of those, but but yeah. Well, I mean, not, like, not 50,000 that, that all celebrate St. Pat. I don't celebrate it. I'm not born there. What, My mum doesn't is, celebrate it. Saint, she was. What do St. Patrick's Day and Cinco de Mayo have in common? They're both nonsense. They're both about drinking. And and uh-huh. it doesn't take much to to celebrate other. That's how we should. I mean, there would be less <laughs> war in the world if we would just celebrate all other cultures based mm-hmm. on drinking. Well, I you don't know? drink. And they even dye the river green, don't they? Uh, I, I I think they do that in Chicago. Uh, I don't Rankers. know if they do that in Boston, but um, the one I do like is the Festival of Light. That's a good one. But it is weird how all the streamers you're talking about Hanukkah. American- and they also go to Korea and stream with those as well. I haven't noticed this last night. I've been watching him for about three years. There's this guy that I've, I, I, I mean, this account on Twitter and Instagram called My Korean Dad. And it's this guy in California who has millions of followers now. And he's just this ordinary kind of dorky Korean American dad and tweeting like. Where was he born? Well, I can tell you because it turns out this guy, I went to elementary school with him. (gasps) This guy, Nicholas Cho, who's like made a name for himself. He was in my third and fourth grade classes, which is uh, eight, nine years old uh, here in Virginia. So, I mean, he was born to Korean parents here in the U.S. He's American then. Do you hassle him like you hassle Gabriel Marcotti? Uh, I do not. Uh, I don't. I, I haven't reconnected with him, but he's he's doing quite well for himself on uh, on the social media. But uh, but now I haven't talked to Gabby in a while. It should I, I should uh, reach back out to him again. It's about time. He'll thank me for that if he sees this. He's gonna have avoided him for about a year. So I think that would be the answer to your country. People need to say I'm American, but it only seems to be people from Texas that say that. You do ever do you refer to yourself as American, or have you given yourself some kind of uh, American dash? No I'm, no, I'm American. Good. I'm, well done. I mean, free spirit. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I was born in Israel or anything like that, or my family doesn't even go back to Israel. They go back to Eastern Europe. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a Yank. Actually, I consider myself English or, yeah. or to piss you off, I consider myself British. Don't fucking say British. <laughs> You're North American. You, you hate when people do that. I well, ask you, is it's that a British expression? You're like, completely inaccurate british is to is the same as calling you north american north america is mexico america usa and canada north america and then you next level down is then you're american so for me it's english or it's a londoner then english then british then european then i'm an earthling and it goes in that order but no, it annoys me when americans hear an accent if they don't know what it is they go oh it's a british accent there's there's not such a thing as a british accent there's british accents but not a british accent and i'll take that to the grave with me and the number of times i've been banned from uh twitch and youtube channels for going oi stop calling it a british accent there's no such fucking thing but it's unlike me to be pedantic though is it no it isn't at all so i found that i found the georgia video should i just put it up to the camera or should i try to send it to you um you can whatsapp it to me i mean no uh um tweet it to me and then i can play it <laughs> all right um 
Let's see. This is exciting video right here. I think something just come out of my nostril. <laughs> Don't know what it's, it's, I feel better now, but I think something flew out. I'll have to look at that. It'd be like the JFK assassination all over again. Right. Uh, Mars Gunner says, born in the US, and they call themselves Italian. Like Joe Rogan says, he's, he's Italian. No, you're not. No, you're fucking American, Joe. It's like if my, me and my brother were both English, we would never refer to ourselves as uh, as Irish. We don't, I don't even a, care about Ireland. We don't Does have a face? We don't have a strong national identity in the sense. Well, you that should do. It helps I know we your should. Country out. I know we you should. You need to go be, have more American flags. Yeah, you've got enough flags everywhere, though, haven't you? That's a nice thing. I do like that. I didn't know until a few years ago that you've got lots of different flags. Every time you have a new state, you make the flag different. Well, there's state flags, and there's, and then, I mean, almost, I, I don't even know what the state flag of Virginia looks like. I know what the state flag of Maryland looks like. For whatever reason but I, I i can't even state flags don't mean diddly to me as far as i'm concerned it doesn't sound like you're overly bothered that's probably the best way to be you never see a union flag hanging from anywhere here there's or an like, english flag i don't care there's not there are very few states in my experience that have like strong state pride like texas is one new york is one uh yeah, Texas is, uh, it's, I mean, Texas once seceded from the Union. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, there's not that same kind of, like, I guess if they were, like, if Hertfordshire, uh, does Hertfordshire I mean, have their own boy. flag? Cambridgeshire. Hertz? What? I always Hearts. thought Mike Hertz was from, was from Hertfordshire. I think he is from Hertfordshire. He's Hertfordshire Mexican. <laughs> it's, you know, it's a very slim diet, uh, diet, uh, graphic di di uh, I don't know some word that I've forgotten how to say. That's uh, anyway. Moving on. Um, right, Demsec has a question, guys. What's your view about Chris Kavanagh is a City supporter and FR? I don't know who Chris Kavanagh is, and I don't know what FR means. I don't know. I, I don't know who Chris. I know who Chris Carpenter is. And oh, I, know French. Who, uh, I know a guy named Mike Kavanagh. Uh, who is Chris Kavanagh? Why would we care? He's put it out three times because uh, people, if you put a question, I save it for later. Anyway, it, Chris um, Demsek can answer, explain that later. So I'm going to get rid of that. Charlotte has put, I have a question if you want to get into it. What do you think we need to do, not do, to get into the top four? Well, first of all, we need to shoot more. <laughs> not, that, not that we can really shoot much more than we already are. There's the, sm there's the smart ass answer to this question and the regular answer to this question. Um, because I think winning and not losing would be, would be good. Uh, scoring and not conceding would be good, but um, we need to not overthink play one game at a time and win the, win the game that's in front of you. I mean, it, all we really have to do, I, I, I don't think we need to win any, I'm not saying we shouldn't go for it, but, the three games that are, and, and really, you could say two in Chelsea and, and Liverpool that we have left. We don't play United again, do we? Or do we? No, we do. Yes. Uh, and and Spurs. So I mean, I, I just I think we have to beat the teams that are below us in the table, and and not stress too much about the t the games that are above because they're going to be drop points all around us. Um, you know, it'd be a bonus to to go out and. And, and beat Chelsea. That one's a home game, I think, right? It'd be a uh, bonus. Yeah, because I think no, we started... Chelsea, Chelsea and Spurs are away. Liverpool is at home, I think. Anyway, oh, let me right. play this video. We'll come back to this, Charlotte, if you're still there. So, I need to share this screen. Can you see it? Oh, yeah, there we go. Is right, it going to have sound? I need, to... I need to make it bigger. And then... This audio. was the moment that, that Tom Canton's wedding almost was cancelled. Hold on, there we go. I'm about to enter Georgia. Was there going to be audio just with it? Entered Georgia. Georgia. Oh, I didn't share audio, did I? Yeah, no, it had it had the audio. Okay. Stop screen. Share screen. Share screen. Click share audio. School by error. I think you'll find uh are you christened Michael? What? Not christened. Whatever your lot do. Did they cut the tip of my penis off? No! Was your proper name Michael, your given name? Oh, yeah. Same as my dad and my brother. I hate that name. Right, so How go here. How do you think it would have been? I don't know. You're a lot all weird. You do weird things. No, so I, here we go. I, I, you ready? I'm Rufus Feinberg, and, and, uh, and I just go with by, I, I go by Michael because, you know. Okay, listen. I'm about to enter Georgia. 
No, still no fucking audio. Had enough of this. I clicked to share audio and it's refusing to do it. So quite frankly, it can it can bugger off. But you saw the video of it and I'm watching it again, even though I don't want to watch it again. Welcome to Georgia. Yeah. So you were there at the fault of all of the pro- bloody there's 18 more things in there. Uh so ah, thank you, Nick. Demographic. That's the word I was looking for to describe uh, a Mexican hurt for they, they, they can hear the audio, by the way. They can. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Well, okay, um, you get you get the point though. I entered Georgia. Oh, Chris is a referee. Chris Kavanaugh. Chris, I think that was Chris Kavanaugh. Oh, he's a referee, is he? <sighs> yeah, they're all saying Premier League ref. Well, then, in that case, I think he's a cunt. <laughs> Ding the bell, please, Michael. That's the first time we've had to see. <laughs> oh, did I break uh, the rule of, of ABW? I'm sorry. No, there are no rules. Ah, uh, oh, Gary's there. Hello, everybody. Uh, Don Juan. I mean, oh, you know, since I've lost weight, right, <laughs> I've uh, normally you when you sit forward, your belly stops you going too far forward, doesn't it? Because you've got a big belly. So you can comfortably lean like that. And now I find myself leaning further and further forward. I've obviously lost some. I have to keep going, oh, fuck it. And I'm leaning too much forward and it's hurting my stomach. Do you ever so keep the sign. remote in there? Do you ever do you ever store things in your fold? I have I have a couple of Joey's in there. And I don't know to celebrate at times. Um, Bob Lex, how do we train party and not kill a pigeon where he's shooting? Oh, so how... It's one of the most confounding things about I mean, he's clearly improving, not just necessarily with his shooting, but, I mean, he, he's becoming a more and more valuable player. He seems to be settling in. Um, but, I, I mean, he did it again in the last game. I mean, I, you you do practice that. I mean, like, you know to, to get your body over the ball and stuff. I mean, you I don't understand how he can keep skying shots like that. Imagine Mr. when the first one goes in, though. Mr. Boblex, did you give us one thing, Eva? One credit? One ding-a-ling? It says you've got a one next to your name. Bits leader with one. Because I don't look at the, um, the, the the stream thing. You give us 69 bits. Dear, oh, dear. Shame I can't share that. That's very kind, you dirty boy. Oh, Nick says, yeah, Nick, you need to let me know when people do these things. Because uh, we can't incorporate anything that you do via Twitch. Um, Nick, do you know how to go and make Mr. Bob Lex a uh, the little diamond next to his name? Because I, I think I follow him on Twitter. There's so many people. I lose track. So, uh, yeah, go and do that for Mr. Bob Lex. He would be so kind. Nick, give him a little diamond. VIP. VIP, the boy. Not because he's given us 69 bits. Just because he's a nice bloke. Night is at home. Man. Chelsea away. Man United have at all the same tough games. Yeah, there are quite a few of the top are playing each other. Beat Liverpool and City. Oh, here you go. Streamlabs. Want to support the show for free? Link your Amazon Prime to Twitch and subscribe for us for free. Mm. So that's good. We've got four people watching on Twitch at the moment. There should be more people. There should be more. I think I'm about three of those. Oh, I they can hear. Any, I don't think any of the games that we have left are, are out of the question. I mean, I, I I'm not saying that I don't think we can beat Liverpool. I mean, we 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 just showed recently, and I know that the full squads weren't there. Their best players weren't there. Our worst players weren't there. Um, but uh, you know, I do think that we could beat them on their on the day. I think that we could beat Chelsea. I think we could beat Spurs. I think we could Chelsea do any of it. Shit. But we don't. I don't know that we. You know, we have to win fifteen out of fifteen games. What we really need to do is not drop points against. Watford and against Brighton and against Palace again. So, you know, it's all there for the taking, though. Oh, Nick did thank him 20 minutes ago because Nick is the only one who's moderating. I think Steph might be a moderator mm. on on the Twitch as well. Um, oh, I thought I did, Bob Lex. There's so many people, I, I can't I barely keep track of it. Um, ah, lovely. Seeing what else people are saying. We've got some more questions. Uh, we're running out. So Charlotte's one. How do we keep top four? Carry on. Carry on with what we're doing. Lovely attacking football. And give give uh, Lacazette a lot of time. 
because you saw how much he when he scored, he thought he'd scored how much that meant to the bloke. He's over the moon and the way he celebrated. So much passion. Yeah, we so, had we had a uh in, in the um in the open mic show after the game, we had a, a kind of a a couple of strong proponents of trying to extend his contract and and, and keep Aston. him around. I like Aston. He had a red lights on. Man after my own heart. Yeah. Aston's very good. You should have him on more often. Right, question from Fawley Knows. I want everybody in the chat to answer this. Uh, what do you think of Tottenham? We delayed the podcast for an hour specifically to share what we what what you thought about them. I, I do take photos. So, uh, oh, yeah, this is more stuff that Nick has done with, with Twitch because Nick is a Twitch. Go to Twitch, people, if you are following us. Like and go to call somebody, but. Go and look, go and type in N I C K F I G H T S and then follow him. Don't have to watch him, just follow him because that'll make Nick feel happy. Uh, but don't watch his streams because he streams Pokemon and other bullshit like that. Uh, our stream lab says, want to follow one of the ABW members on Twitter? Type exclamation mark their name. Don't type their name, put like Danny or Chris or John. Or have you added. Uh, James and Jock. I don't think Daniel's joined us yet. I just think he's in there for the fun of it. Don Juan, I know what I want third. I know too many <laughs> Chelsea fans. Mr. Boblex joined the Discord. <laughs> Why have I got the haircut? I had coffee today, Mike. Coffee. I had a double coffee. I bought more coffee pods. So I am quite awake. But it makes my shoulder ache. But it also gives me... Oh, there you go. I don't I'm think telling you, you there's, there's, there's no other show like the Sunday Roast for this kind of information. Um, yeah, so yeah. I had a double coffee today. Sean's one mate. We had McDonald's. Well, I took the top bun off of each of my quarter pounders. So I had a tell, double quarter tell pounder. The, tell the story about why when we went out to dinner, you could not get your burger. Yes, there is a place in Huntingdon. Feel free to Google it, people. If you go Tower Field, Huntingdon, there is a big McDonald's. And then there was a Frankie and Benny's, and there's this new place called Burger Amour, which is a uh, French for love, I think. Burger Amour. And they did pizzas on their menu. There's two companies in the same place, which confused me. It's something pizza and Burger Amour. And I went, we love a burger. So we went up there, had a look through the menu. Went, we'll have this burger, that burger. We'll all have burgers, all four of us. And I went, sorry, we can't serve burgers. And Mike went, is it because I was Jewish? And we, and we had to leave. That was the end. That's why I, uh, anytime someone doesn't do something you want them to, I, I always just assume it's because I'm Jewish. <laughs> just <laughs> like Ali G. Could have uh, nothing to no, do with it. But. That's not what happened at all. Like, why Was did Arsenal to... lose the game against everything? <laughs> oh, it's because I'm Jewish. Sorry. <laughs> People that probably don't know you're Jewish, Mike, so you want to keep that. Keep oh, because I, yeah, I, never, no, I never talk right. about that. I keep that very no. close to me. You do certainly do. You, you keep it under your um, hat thing. Is it Hanukkah? I keep, it in, my, I keep it in my folds. They go soon to be falling out on a floor near you as he's losing the weight at an alarming rate. Have you checked that you haven't actually got Ebola? That's the only reason you're losing weight. I'm, I'm trying to. I actually uh, inserted a tapeworm into my body recently, and uh, and it's doing its job. So. Anyway, so he said, "Why can't we order? Why can't we order burgers?" And the woman said, "Because when McDonald's set up this entire in um." food place there's, there's mcdonald's there's a kfc over the other side of it there's a huge cinema and there's a gym there whole complex used to be where huntington united played true story and uh, they said part of the agreement was that all the other mcdonald's and the other four places that sell food there none of them are allowed to sell burgers because mcdonald's does and i said but then I can order a burger. She said, yeah, we're allowed to deliver them. I said, well, look, can, I, you can, can I order it now? You deliver it here. <laughs> Obviously, she'd been this, through this entire scenario with about 100 people. They just It was a shitty place, though, wasn't it? <laughs> they just got strips of, of unvarnished wood, like they'd broken up some pallets and nailed them to the walls and the ceilings. It's a horrible place. So we went, fuck I mean, it. I, th th I thought you were going to take me to you know a fine dining establishment, but uh, but it was it was all right. Um they well, there is a nice place. It's called Vinewood. Or is that is that out of GTA 5? Not sure. I think Vinewood could well be... Winwood. No, that's Stevie Winwood. Stevie Back Winwood. Who, who is one of the concerts that I saw when I lived in London? Uh, I went to a number oh. of concerts in London at Wembley Arena. Stevie Winwood, um, Aerosmith, Don Henley. Did I see yeah. Stevie Winwood or did I just listen to a lot of him? Maybe I just listened to a lot of him. Um, and so that was the gist of it. They said, "Get fucked." 
And then but, I said, but, I want But were pizza. they also not able to serve chips? I think that might have been another thing they weren't. No, but it's strange because the place that was there before was Bella Italia, and they did huge burgers for the whole time they were there for about six years until Bella Italia went under. They did burgers and chips and everything. I didn't want that, but I thought, there's no point having this, this conversation. And then the pizzas were very nice. I said, no shit on my pizza. I'll have a pepperoni passion with mushrooms. And were you there when I said I, I wanted some jalapenos? And they said, we don't do jalapenos. And I said, yeah. I said, could you go off and have a look in your handbag? And she went, well, we won't have any. She come back and there's jalapenos on it. I said, where did you yeah, get jalapenos she, she from? You the jalapenos, but you also, got, you also got all the, uh, the football pitch on top of the pizza, though. Yeah, I said, she said, oh, I found them in my handbag. I thought, that's clever. And I said, what's all this green shit on my pizza? She said, well, that's basil or dill or No, it was, no, it was, uh, it was, what was it called? Shit uh, is what it was called. No, it had a name that sounded like, I, I, oh, shit. It was like a four-letter word uh, that sounds like a verb. Verb? <laughs> rocket. No, it was rocket. Was That's it? what it was. It, and Rocket, it like I said, a four-letter word. <laughs> it pissed me off. And then I said, I'm, I don't want this. I'm, and before I'd finished moaning about it, Mr. Feinberg leant across because he sat next to me. And then uh, he picked the bits off quite erotically and then and dangled him on it and then he ate them. I, don't I have, know, a, very actually, I have a very doing. sharp tongue, so I, uh, I I surgically removed. I targeted and sur with, a, with an incredible level of precision. I removed the uh, the rocket from the pizza. And, Loki uh, says, try a burger in, in Ramsey. I'm not going anywhere near Ramsey. That was inbred fucks. I thought uh, that, um, I thought, I, I, and, and I keep forgetting whether these are topics we've covered already on, on the Sunday roast, but I, I, I thought that Wimpy was, was gone. And then I saw a, uh, I saw a Wimpy on the main stretch at Borumwood, like on my way to Meadow Park. Uh, in October, I, I saw a wimpy there. And if I hadn't just eaten a full meal at a pub earlier in the, you know, all, along that strip, I would have gone in there. Cause it was, I think everybody in the wimpy was over 80 years old. They were all just sitting in there looking it's, like they had nowhere else to be. It's not a place anybody really goes. Um, it's very poor question from Demsec. Danny and Mike, what's your favorite pantomime? I don't like pantomimes. I don't, even, surprisingly. I don't even know how to answer that question. I, I, I'm, I'm looking up the actual definition of pantomime. Because to well, me, Snow pantomime, White. just it just means like some guy going like... No, that's a mime. A pantomime well, but is what we have at Christmas in the UK where men dress as women and they do um, things like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves or... I don't like them. They, they irritate. Oh, no, you don't. Fuck off, you do. A theatrical entertainment mainly for children that involves music, topical jokes, and slapstick comedy and is based on a fairy tale or nursery story, usually produced around Christmas. Well, there you go. Christmas is dead to you. I, Basically, I, I hate, Frank I hate Moon, pantomimes, Frank... and they hate me because I'm Jewish. Frank Bruno, you know who he is? I do know who Frank Bruno is. Dressed up as a, as a fairy godmother in panto with some ex-TV um, soap stars earning an absolute fortune, people bringing their kids. Oh, I hate it. So uh, well, next question. In panto is basically just like cross-dressing or is it? Yeah, that's the thing. Men dress up as the dame. It's an ancient old thing going back hundreds of years and it's shit. Sam Fisher says, uh, what do you think Abramovich should sell up Chelsea? Hmm. If he did, it would only go to someone who's absolutely loaded from being another Middle Eastern company will come in and buy because it's a ready-made money laundering scheme. <laughs> it, it, well, it is, and and by the same token, I mean the big question is what will he will he want that money back? If you've got to pay a billion and a half to Roman Abramovich before you even get into whatever Chelsea is worth without that loan, you're you're not going to get that money back unless they win the Champions League every single year. And you're not going to win the Champions League every single year unless you operate the club at a significant loss, like, like, uh, like he has essentially covering those losses with with loans of of money laundering. So I, I've said this for years that when Chelsea, when when Pan, <laughs> when Chelsea, when Pantoma, when Abramovich either gets tired of Chelsea or when something forces him to call that loan in and and get out of the club 
they're going to have a very, very precipitous fall. I, I just don't see any other way around it. Uh, and they could be in League One within a few years. I mean, the, the sell-off of their players will probably be significant. I could be wrong, but I just there, there's the way that he's run that club is the opposite of self-sustaining. It's it's unsustainable, and I don't know that anybody else that buys it other than another Newcastle type of consortium. But but I mean. It isn't even their own money to get good. He's, they'd be paying billions of dollars for the history that they're buying. So that's what I yeah. go for. Liquidate them. Mr. Bob Lex is now a VIP. We're only allowed 20 of them. He's always been now. a VIP as far as I'm concerned. Phil Macca says, hello, normal Danny and millionaire looking Danny. I don't know which one's which. Hopefully I'm the millionaire looking one because I don't look homeless and I can shave my head properly. I was just about to go to bed. You go to bed, my boy. You be good. Oh, there we go. It's, you know, you, it's upside down. There you go. That's better. Um, it's. Uh, I always think you're going to tell me tales about the sea. Well, you see, back when I was, uh, you know, crossing the seven seas looking for buried treasures, in depth. I love. I love being in depth. Johnny oh, Depp. My... Hold on, Michael has given us. 69 bits as well in Sweden. Don't give us bits, you fuckers, because then you have to pay money. Explain what a bit is. Well, one bit is one cent. So you'll buy 100 bits for about $1.15, something like that. And then, uh, oh, Gary's there as well on the, on the Twitch. Oh, I'm going to make Gary. I'm going to make you a VIP as well, Gary, because I like you. you know, see what he did? He changed his name from Don't Waste the Tweets to Don't Waste the Twitch. He's a, did you hear him on our podcast last week? Wasn't he good? Yeah. Oh, Gary's good stuff, man. He's good stuff. Do you one carry on nice telling your story? You, one yeah. of the nice people. I shouldn't say guys because there's plenty of of uh, incredible women in the, in the podcast game as well. That uh, that that I've met in this journey. I hate when people say that, like on on American Idol or Pop Idol or anything. Oh, this has been such an incredible journey. I love it. Fucking hell. Chris is in the bloody Twitch as well. You know, people, last time, you should all log in with your Twitch at the same time. Last time we had 14 people watching on Twitch. That would be statistically in the top 20% of all the people on Twitch at the moment. I was watching a bloke the other day. He had, a hun he had uh, who was it, um, Osman Gold or something. He had 240,000 people watching him on Twitch. And they had chat. Imagine the chat with 240,000 people. People were donating him hundreds of pounds at a time, dollars at a time, and he didn't even acknowledge it. Yeah, so it's, like a, it's like a Lee Gunner uh, chat room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that cunt still isn't happy. All of you to see where that cunt still isn't happy, is he? Saw him, someone did a tweet, a, a video of him bitching and whining, going, that, Tommy Ashu shit, this bloke shit, uh, Ramsdale, he shit, fuck off. You're an absolute waste of space we're not going to talk about him yeah he he was on a channel that uh that i've done some content for recently and and uh that raised some eyebrows i'm not sure i was a big fan of that not, a, not you did content all. for people well i was doing a post game show um, oh i know i know now we have made um mr bob Lex, you sir have uh, now got a no um gary you now have a little star a little thing next to your name a little VIP thing. So we only got seven left to go. The first one to get one was Michael. And Michael's just given us that um, 69 bits. So the gist of how two ways Twitch make money is they they you pay $3.99 a month, $3.99 a month, and then people either get 50% of it or 25%. We get 25%, so don't bother doing it. And that's one way they make money. And then you don't get adverts. And the other way is you buy bits. So you'll spend $1.00. Or say ten dollars, and you'll get eight hundred bits or something like that, and then you give the bits. One bit is equal to one p, and so the standard thing that people give you is sixty nine or four twenty, you know, for the herb. And I then, have I have one question, which is how much of that do I get? Well, you can have it all if you want. I'm loaded. You're more loaded than me. How dare you? I don't know. This kind of content though doesn't uh, you know doesn't come cheap. Ah, yeah, so people make a living on that doing their. So you go, you put exclamation mark Chris, and then Streamlabs comes up with that's changed. It's uh, you've, you've that's wrong. Um, Nick got to edit that, he's changed his thing. 
Uh, Non-Swatch, Chris is on the Twitch. You can get away with more stuff on the Twitch. They don't care. Uh, I need to fix... Oh, he's already said. Uh, what can a VIP do, Gary asks? You can shit in the bushes outside Mike's house. That's about, that's about all you ever going to be able to do. Um, bloody hell, there's loads of stuff going on here. What else? Oh, Mr. Boblex has put... Um, what's he put? Little things. Don't know what they are. Have you invested in Bitcoin? I was listening to Antonopoulos, a bloke who Joe Rogan had on in 2014. I listened to it again the other night because I do understand cryptocurrency. And ABW has its own Bitcoin wallet. I can't remember the login for it. And I'm hoping that when I do get the details, there's going to be a few hundred Bitcoins on there. Then I will be able to retire mm -hmm. to the moon. But I was listening back to that show and it was $400 per Bitcoin. I remember thinking at the time. Oh, geez. It's like 40. It, it went up to like 40,000 40, at one point, right? 70 or 80,000. 70,000, I think it went to dollars. And I remember thinking at the time, should I buy some? And instead, I put all my money in. There you go. That's to Sean when she was little. And so I didn't. And I went and put them in premium bonds instead. Oh, it was Sean's yeah. money for when she went to uni. Um, notification. What have I got your notification for? Security code for Twitch. Who's asked for a security code? Maybe it's in my WhatsApp. Someone's asked for one. No, it's probably Nick or Chris or someone like that. Uh, it may have been me, Nick says. Arky darky. Any more questions uh, before we go? Um, Phil Macker says he's never understood Bitcoin. I don't understand how, like, you... Like, what do you do? You, you, uh, what's the word? You have to like scrape it off the side of some mine. cave or something like that. Mine, yeah, there's a certain mine. amount of bitcoins. Um, something tech, uh, I forgot his name, so I can't think it's Sergio Tashini, but that was a brand of Italian my sportswear. Nephew, my <laughs> nephew for a while was into like building computers to mine yeah. for bitcoin and stuff, and I'm like, what that's the why the price of graphics cards is so expensive. Yes, yeah, so what you do is you. Uh, there's a certain amount of uh, Natoshi's Yakamura. No, uh, the, the bitcoins and the in the smaller amounts are called Natoshi's. I'm getting that completely wrong. And then the way you put, no one knows who the person is. The way they've designed it is there will be a finite number of bitcoins available. You mine the bits a bit at a time, and you've got to go. There's a program you run, and the faster you is can it run called the program, blockchain. I know something. Blockchain is blockchain what? is where at the moment, your bank account, it's only the bank account keeps all the all the details. But with blockchain, everybody who has the Bitcoin, uh, you can check every transaction. So every transaction is on every single device that has anything to do with Bitcoin. So if it was you and me, then all the information would be on both of our phones so that everybody can track it. With a, with a bank account, only you and your bank account know who's got it. So there's millions of people Damn, that have got that. part of the blockchain. That's why the future is blockchain. Because then I, it can't I, be manipulated, and you can track yeah. every single transaction without the people's names. So, so I'm 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 with you on this. I don't get it. And if I bought it, if I started investing in it, everyone can just kiss their money goodbye. <laughs> because that's still, when it would lose ninety eight percent of its value. You wouldn't go and invest in in that at the moment. It's, it's dropped down to I think forty. I checked the other day, but there are thousands. Well, that, There's but, one called Sam but Coin. You buy? It? I mean, what? I mean, I do have a finance background. I just don't quite understand. The whole, yeah, NFT is another thing I don't get. Non-fungible uh, tokens. That means something, you can go draw a picture of something on the internet and then go, right, I am auctioning. That is now worth one pound and then somebody can buy it and then you do more. And every time, it's, it's like pointless um, uh, modern well, art where are it's only... 80, but people are paying like massive money for NFTs. But it's like having a, a bit by a bit of modern art where it's like an unmade bed by Tracy Emin, having a digital version of that, and then you can buy bits of that or you can buy the whole thing. And then it just the more like Bitcoin, it doesn't actually exist. And then the more people want it, the more it'll be worth more money. So you can buy you can buy this like a lot of things to do with monkeys. People are doing Kevin Campbell's involved in some of it. Um it is it's a pyramid scheme. Bitcoin isn't, but those NFTs are because you don't have anything for it. Well, I mean, the currency or things only hold as much value as, as they do where there's a supply and a demand for something. Yeah, that's right. She is. Uh... I don't know who that is. <laughs> Tracy Amy, she just 
fucking smokes too much, face like a smacked ass. She did modern art of an unmade bed and had it in a, you know, like Damien Hurst did uh, a sheep, a shark or a, shit, a, a shark in um, chlorophyll, was it? Or something like that. Chlorophyll, chlorophyll the, the stuff you put over your mouth? And, and, no, and it was not chlorine either, some kind of clear liquid. Arsenal have an NFT. I, I wouldn't I, be I just, surprised. I used to think I was kind of young and formaldehyde hip and i understood how things worked and i like you know i'd always explain to my parents and you know what now you need to explain new technologies are. i i yeah and and i you know i i, I got these old age glasses so, now I've the got, gist I, of how you make money out of an nft you go and do 10 drawings and say these are gunas pod drawings you have them only on the internet and then no one ever owned them and then you can go i'm auctioning off the series of 10 you know then, what i do instead though I go Look and I have one. Alan Smith help me out and get something that actually exists that has actual value, both sentimental. What would that be? <laughs> do, do, do you like this transition? <laughs> uh, actual sentimental <laughs> and real value. And, um, and, and, and then we auction it off to raise money for Gunas versus cancer. And by the way, I have faced questions about whether this thing was real or legit or not. Thank and, you. um, and and so if you watch the Gooners podcast at 9 p.m. UK on Tuesday, you'll see the man himself, uh, Smudger. Smudger will be on the Gooners pod uh, talking about Arsenal, talking about uh, Ask him the, the process of getting that uh, of getting that that amazing kit together. Ask him uh, questions for me. I want to know about you know in this country you can play for England. And then you can play for that's because all Premier League teams, all the, the league are professional. England is professional. England B is semi professional. He did that at Alva Church. England C is amateur. He's played for all three. I'd like to know his times playing with those and his goal scoring record at Alva Church. Well, did you, did you read his book? Because it's all in there. I'll lend, I'll give you. I should have brought you a copy when I came. I actually read the first time we had him on the podcast. I was very, uh, very. It was very important to me to be knowledgeable about the book that he came out. So I actually read read his book. That was the same weekend that Lee Judges came to New York. I remember because I was sitting in my hotel waiting for King Judges to arrive, and I was reading Alan Smith's book. I hope he had trumpets um, ready for his highness when he turned up. Yes, uh, <laughs> Chris is really getting the hang of this. Uh, this where you can say whatever the fuck you want on Twitch. This people is why I prefer Twitch because it's fantastic. Well, you ask him that question yourself by by uh, by joining us in the chat on Tuesday, nine o'clock. You should be just getting up for the day. You know, yesterday I woke up at half past eight and got in here at quarter past nine p.m. The day I was awake at four, and then I was going to get up at five, and then I fell asleep leaning forward in my bed like that, listening to Radio Five. And I thought, hold on, it's half time. Fuck, I've got George's coming around for dinner at six. Fuck that. Um, well, here we go. Uh, we will end the show with your video as usual. Uh, Gimli's. <laughs> Do you remember Gimli's cum sock that had its own Twitter account? <laughs> Back in the days. I was. I actually did a show tonight with Tom Canton on for. And we talked for almost an hour about podcasting and how it all started. And I talked about Tom leaving and about the with Gimli leaving and Jace leaving and falling out with people and uh, and all that other stuff. Yeah, it was, uh, it was nice. Tom in Tom in his uh, in his young age has has had a full life of of podcasting and journalism experiences. And I'll tell you what, he's on I with almost everybody. He's on the best of terms now. So that that tells you something about. Uh, you know, I know, I know it wasn't always it's going places. It wasn't always smooth, but he's 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 made amends or what? I mean, I don't, I don't claim to know anything about any of these, but uh, but it's it, it's nice to see him getting along with everybody, and uh, and he's a great friend. He, he honestly, he's twenty seven going on forty five because he's a hell of a lot more mature than I'll ever be. Uh, yeah. And until I get uninvited for. One of my various things I'll probably do between now and then. I'm looking forward to going to his wedding. Well, yes, there's a. It's going to be a busy day. 
Are you going for the entire thing, or has he had sense and not invited you to the the bit where you can scream? But I love her. I want yeah, no, her I'm, I'm going to be at the I'm going to be at the part where they're like, if anyone should have any reason why this shouldn't happen, and I'm going to get up and I'm going to like unroll like 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 this huge, like the 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 Torah basically the Bible is just going to unroll, and I'm going to go through. Do you want me to start at the beginning or the end? Before we go, I need to put this little thing up here because I can't acknowledge you, wonderful people. This is our our um, our control panel, stream uh, stream manager from uh, Twitch, which just says at the top, MJ has given us sixty nine bits, and so did Mister Boblex, and it says Mister Boblex followed you seven hours ago, and uh, Crimson Pirate one two three followed you three days ago, and then it shows all the little chat. There you go. So. Yeah, thank you, you two, for that. We might get that. They make so little money from Twitch. I think once a year we get a check from them for about about 40 quid. But that's more than some people make. So uh, we've got 30 people, Mike. 30, 30 bloody people watching us. You know what? I would be. I would do this show with you if there was one person watching us. Um, Thund- which yes, is, I, I think, Thunder. where we're headed. But, but uh, can't say enough for, uh, you know, you guys are spending your Sunday afternoon slash evening slash early Monday morning listening to this. So, uh, it, I, you know, come up with some more topics because, uh, you know, I think we've proven we can pretty much come up with anything to say about anything. Uh, Not picking my nose. I've got long here. And you can see there how long these bits are. And they tickle my nose. So I try and get them and pull them out or pull them, straighten them. I get curly ones. I'm doing that. I'm not picking my nose. Less, uh, more topics brought up by the by the viewers. Less discussion about pooing and and, and anuses and, and that sort of thing. Yes, I was actually on the, the first time I've debuted, debuted my new glasses on uh, on the, on a podcast. Sexy Frank has new glasses. I'm going to go and get laser. Why don't you get laser surgery on your eyes? Uh, I did about 22 years ago. And Does it work? It did, but but. This is the reverse thing. This is what happens when you get old. You you get farsighted, and so these are the special glasses that kind of have the the close up and the far away, and they turn into sunglasses when you go outside. Very very focal. Yes. So uh, what's what's Gary on about? Tom blocked you on Twitter, Mike. He's, he's how would he even around. know? <laughs> Gary's Gary's been mischievous there. I think. I take back everything I said about Gary earlier. <laughs> Uh, like Chris, so you got mentioned in the show a few times, Chris. Um, like Chris says, uh, we all find our path to maturity. Fair play to Tom. Good, good doing good stuff. Yeah, Tom says that he was 19 and uh, it was hard mixing in with a group when you're the new boy. And I did make it clear that I said Chris, who owned the, the show, and explained a little bit of what happened without naming the person, and said Chris didn't have a problem with you, nor did John or Josh or, or me. It was just uh, some other people at ABW. And I didn't name those either. And they said, is that all Tom? And then Tom said, well, I'll go then. So there you go. And uh, I think we, and Tom said, well, I would have, uh, I probably would, wouldn't have been able to do what I'm doing now if he um, would have stayed. But they, just listen to it. It's an hour of me and Tom. We're having a little laugh. And might you get a few mentions of how not to podcast? <laughs> well, anything, if, look, all you got to say is I got mentioned. Now I'll go back and watch it and I'll put a thumbs up. Um but no, I I, I do want to hear that because obviously you are uh, two of my closest, uh, and you are the pod father for me. Pod mother, Ask blog is the pod father. Well, I said you're my pod father. Ah, right, people. Um, Mike has hinted three or four times over the last quarter of an hour that it's time to fuck off. So Tom is very. To I need to eat. I need to have my four ounces of lean protein and vegetables. So uh... it's not out for a couple of days, people, because it was um, done not live. And uh, I think you might even have got a mention, Nick. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I just I said I miss podding with Gimli and Jason, but they're volatile people. And although sometimes it makes it fun living on the edge, I was trying to make an analogy that all the best actors are the ones that are high on crack and drugs and whores, but they are the most convincing actors. There was the bloke who did the Gladiator film. What was his name? English. He used to drink a lot. Uh, Russell Crowe. No, he's dead now. He died on when he was doing um, Gladiator. Famous English actor. Fat. Used to drink a shitload. Couldn't remember his name. I said, uh, great actor. British Chris Farley? No, he's not fucking English anyway. He's getting on my nerves now. Uh, Mark says, are you on keto? No, he's not on keto. Not not exactly. It's a, no. it's a limited calorie exercise. He's having snot and seafood. That's basically what he's having. 
I am having a lot of seafood, I will say. <laughs> right. Um, we're going to play Mike's video again. I mean, we, oh, there we go, Frank Gunner. Where were you on the show that wasn't live? Oliver Reed. Absolute magnificent. And Jason. Why have you two kept yourself so quiet? You now you come in and help me out when I needed help. Yes, people of the ilk of Oliver Reed. Not that Gimli and Jason are alcoholics. No, there's very flamboyant characters, very opinionated, and they made for very good shows. And uh, sometimes the people that do that sometimes go a little bit over the top, like smoking drugs live on a show and getting shit-faced and having to make me now, years later, go and delete all of the After Darks because they got a little bit, bit saucy. It's hard to delete them all. Well, I don't know That's anything about it. that, but these are all lovely people I enjoy, and I hope someday yes. those who don't get along with each other will somehow rediscover their love for each other. That's all. I'm Possibly. Or get murdered. Or be found dead. <laughs> right, Mike, say goodbye to the lovely... Oh, do we do the video and then come back and say goodbye? That's what we do, isn't it? Uh, sure. Why not? Okay. You want to, and, 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 and if you want to get the actual story of how... Because I don't even have the actual story. Awesome. Uh I basically gave him a suggestion of what I think would have been would be great to give away for charity. And by the him, I'm talking about Alan Smith. And he said, send me the send me the shirt, leave it with me. And I sent him the shirt. I left it with him. I didn't bug him. Three months later, this is what arrived. And I really I want to actually hear the background story. So I'll be hearing it live with the rest of you if you tune in 9 p.m. on the Gunners Pod, the history of how this shirt came to be. And if you haven't already very generously given and many of you in the chat have just go to goonersvcancer.com because you're going to want to have a chance to win this so well i gave you money for gooners v cancer but i didn't want to enter the shirt because i didn't want to win it because it wouldn't be fair and i'd only asked her i asked you could you wash it before you send it to me and you said no so i said i'm out right here's the video <laughs> People, don't run away. It's important. I'm going to raid someone in a minute, Chris. You know I'm going to raid. So everybody on Twitch, stay watching on Twitch. When this is over, I will send you all to someone else's channel on Twitch. And then you say, uh, Chris and Danny from A Burkett Wonderland sent you over. And just say hello to our mate, um, Crips. Cripsy. He's an Australian bloke playing FIFA. So we'll do that in a minute. But it would just be nice to send some people over. Because we've got nine people watching. And that would be a lovely thing to do. Right, Mike, um, any you want, think you want to say on your video before we go? Uh, no, just go to GoonersVCancer.com and uh, and check it out. Love to have uh, a donation, and and obviously donating comes with an opportunity to win. And uh, for the award-winning Gooners V Cancer, you're right, Don. Uh, thank you very much. And then uh, Tuesday night at 9 p.m. UK, Alan Smith on the Gooners podcast, and uh, we'll just kind of chat about how how things have been lately and catch up with our friend Alan, aka Smudger. So lovely uh, jubbly. Yep. And ABW. Oh, and, back. and, and, and at some point we'll have the financial pot, uh, where we will be discussing how the Premier League works and why maybe you should be a little less impatient about certain things, but I'm not, I'm trying not to have an actual point of view on it just to share information, but it'll be interesting, uh, both before and then again, after the Arsenal finances come out. So hope you had a good roast and Danny, where can we, uh, what, what are you going to be up to? 
Uh, Wednesday, we've got a podcast. Josh is on it. I don't know who else is yet. I might be on Same Old Arsenal on Tuesday with Chris and Cookie and Craig. And uh, I think that's about it, really. Got a quiet week, so that'd be nice. Other than that, that's it. So people stay there. I'm going to send the people to raid a channel now. So go and say hello to Cripsy and tell him Chris and Danny sent you from a bird camp wonderland. And then uh, start in the raid. We don't usually do these because we don't have enough people. But there's, well, there's seven of you. Some of you have gone. You absolute scumbags. Right. That's the... Has it gone yet? Where is he? He's here. Why can't I? Why can't I hear him? Anyway, that's the end of the podcast, and we will see you later. Bye. See you next bye. Sunday. <laughs> <laughs>